Okay, now I want to talk about a few related topics. Uh, the try-catch statement, or try-catch finally statement, as well as errors and exceptions. So I'm going to start off by talking about the keyword throw. With throw, what we're basically saying is we're going to be throwing an exception. This means that I can put something in here. I'm sure that's misspelled. That's Jack A-N. Yes, that looks a lot better. Okay. So if I put that in there and I run this, this is what's going to happen. Um, line 8 of the file that I'm currently on. So here's where I started to run the program. Right here, I have the file name and the line number where the problem occurred. Throw javelin. So I'm throwing a string. This little marker right here says, okay, this is where the exception occurred. Uh, javelin, that is the output of the throw statement. And my program stopped running at this point. And just to prove that it did actually stop running at that point, we're going to add a little message to the line right after it. Run this again, and there we go. So javelin is the last thing. I know I don't get the hello. My program has crashed, effectively. So with this throw, we are creating an exception. We're creating a problem for the JavaScript engine to say, okay, you cannot really go beyond this point. Something has gone wrong. And I can put a string, I can put a number, there's throw 42, I can do a boolean, whatever you like. So we have a statement, keyword throw, and then something that is the exception that's going to be passed along. Okay, so that's the basics of throw. You're throwing an error, throwing an exception, stopping the program from running. Um, I'm going to actually use real errors in a moment. I'm going to wrap this inside of a try statement. So here I have a try catch. Similar syntax to an if else statement, except there's no conditions on here. All we're really doing is telling the JavaScript engine, I want you to try to do everything inside of here. If you run into a problem, if an exception or an error gets thrown, catch it. And this variable right here is going to hold that error. So if I wanted to see what the problem was, I'll just say caught and then whatever my variable is. All right, let's try this again. There we go, caught, true. So this thing right here, was passed along and then written out. This didn't run again because an error occurred before it, but my program has not failed. See, I get the end appearing in my console. So my program continues to run. That's what the try catch gives us. Even if an error happens, as long as it's wrapped inside of this try, we get to keep going. So a try can be set up to have a try and a catch, or a try and a finally, or a try catch and a finally. The finally is similar to writing something right here. It's what I want to do regardless of what happens, whether there's an error or not an error. This is going to run. Whatever I put inside of here is going to run, whether there was an error here or there wasn't an error here. If I comment out this line, I'll get the hello. No error will be thrown, so the catch will be skipped over and the finally will run. There we go. So the hello inside my try took you a long time inside my finally, and the end that comes after everything. So just it's a way to wrap up code that you definitely want to have happen whether or not an error occurred. Now, throw. I have originally here in the javelin, we're throwing 
that. So caught, and then this is the message. We can also, instead of just putting a string or a number of boolean, we can do objects. So I could create an object to be thrown. And let's say I gave it a name property and a message property. Yeah, just a couple of random things. That means this will be this object. So we could say error name dot message and I would be accessing those properties. So let's run it again. There we are. Caught Baba Salmon. Caught and then the object's name property and the object's message property. Those two things being passed in. Then my finally and then my code afterwards. So what I've done here is very similar to actually creating an error object. If I just have something that I created, this is known as an exception. If I use a built-in object called an error object, this will be an actual error object. This will be the message. And the name will be, really, it's what kind of error object are we getting. Up inside of here, I've got listed, these are the built-in error types. So eval error, if you're working with the eval statement, internal error, something caused the JavaScript engine to crash, like too much recursion or something like that. Range error, you're expecting, uh, or the program's expecting something to be passed to a method or a function and you're outside the possible values that could be passed in, you'll get a range error for that. Uh, reference error, you're referencing something that doesn't exist. Syntax error, again, if you're using the eval, but what you've passed in um, was invalid syntax. Type error, this is probably the most common. Um, it was expecting a boolean, you gave it a string. It was expecting a number, and you passed in a boolean. Something like that, the wrong data type and URI error, there's some URI methods that if you have a failure there, you'll get this UI, URI error. This is the generic parent of all these types of error objects, and we are allowed to create these. We can say new error and then pass in a message. So that's what I'm gonna get here, which makes it very similar to doing this. It's just, this is an official error that we're creating, and in our code, we can use these. So caught, the name was error, that's what it is here, and a stick was the message. So we can use this inside of our code. We can capture any sort of problem. If you are writing code and you don't know whether or not your um, user's browser is going to support something, or if the version of Node the person is running is going to support something, you can attempt it inside of a geo, inside of a, uh, a try-catch block. And if it doesn't work, well, then you can write some code to handle the fact that it doesn't. You don't have to worry about the browser crashing if you put the code inside of here. So let's URL equal That's the right address, and then I'm going to do a fetch for this URL. And I'll just put a placeholder function inside of here. There we go. Reference error. I'm referencing something that doesn't exist. In Node, there is no built-in fetch method. Browser, not a problem. Or the recent browser is not a problem. But in Node, there is no fetch method. So I was trying to use fetch, but fetch is not defined. So I'm getting a reference error. The name is reference error. 
That's the type of error that I'm getting right here. So we have exceptions, which are throwing things that we invent. There is throwing errors. We create a new error object and pass in the message that you want. And try catch is how we handle things that may or may not work. If statements you're asking if something is true or false, you're running code that does work, you're running code that does exist, you're referencing elements that do exist, methods that do exist, and just saying, what's the answer to this question, yes or no? Try catch is, I'm asking the browser, I'm asking the JavaScript engine to do something that may or may not work. It may cause an error, it may cause an exception, it may want to crash the browser. So we're saying, all right, if it does throw an error, if it does throw an exception, here's the code that I want you to run instead. And then we can also tack on a finally to say, this is what I want you to do, regardless of whether or not it worked. So that's errors, exceptions, try, catch, finally, and throw. Any questions, please leave them in the comments, and thanks for watching.